show with me, Joe. It's the show where I read an article a day to keep my stupid away. You learn something, I learn something. We grow together. Yesterday, I went over some ways that introverts can start talking to people. And today, I promised that I would give you a bunch of icebreakers and questions that you can put in your back pocket to have the next time you go to a networking event, a party, or wherever. The title of this article is A Completely Audacious Guide to Breaking the Ice. Use this set of no-fail conversation starters to build relationships with new friends and colleagues anywhere in any situation on planet Earth. If you're on Mars, sorry, these aren't going to work. Written by Michael Thompson. I'll probably break up this video into two parts. The first part will be work conversation starters or professional conversation starters. And the second will be social conversation starters because mm, they're slightly different in your in their approaches. So to kick things off, we're going to start with conversation starters in professional settings and then move on to social ones. When I first researched better ways to communicate with others at work, I advised leading with a question like, describe your perfect day. However, after the first person I asked looked me up and down and replied, alone. I realized that going straight in with bold questions might not be the best way. After many trials, some tribulations, and even more errors, I discovered the power of leading with the following type of opener. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Over the last few weeks, I've been asking everyone I meet their opinion regarding this one question. This works especially well in professional settings as it cushions your introduction in an engaging and memorable way. Everyone likes to be asked their opinion, and chances are you'll learn something interesting about the person too. So that's funny. This takes me actually back to a book called The Game. It was written by an author named Neil Strauss, where he kind of infiltrated the underground society of pickup artists. And when actually talking to women, they advised this as well. It's called an opinion opener, where you approach a woman and ask her opinion on something. Hey, I just want to get a female's perspective on this. I just got these new shoes. Do you, do you think they look cool? You can use an opinion opener, as he said. Sorry to interrupt. Over the last few weeks, I have been asking everyone I meet for their opinion regarding this one question. Why was your boss the best boss? Why was your best boss the best? That's a tongue twister. Say that fast. Why was your best boss the best? Why was your best boss the best? Why was your best boss the best? Why, your be why was your best boss the best? Why was your best boss the best? What one quality is mandatory to be an effective leader? What is the greatest lesson you have learned from one of your mentors? If you could take to the stage tomorrow and give a talk about anything you wanted, what topic would you choose? Questions above work well in both one-on-one -on -one and group settings. All of these can start a great debate. And all of them generate more than one word answers, aka the enemy of all conversation starters. Now that you're armed with a few ideas to start conversations at a networking event, let's move on to initiate conversations in the office, whether you're sitting around the water cooler, waiting for coffee, or waiting for a meeting to start. Conversation starters in the office. In the office, here's another lead that you can try using. Hey, recently my friends and I have been arguing about the following topic. Would you mind being the tiebreaker? This is a great lead question because it serves as a signpost that an interesting question is coming, giving you permission to ask conversation starters such as, in the next five years, which skills do you think will be in most demand? What type of job do you think would be beneficial for someone starting out in their career? Is follow your passion good or terrible advice? Do you think people are more productive working from home or in the office? <clears throat> and this is another way to actually approach women too. You can approach them and say, hey, me and my friend are having this debate and we need a third opinion. Do you think... A cuter name for a dog is Taco or Supreme. <laughs> if you like my content, hit the subscribe button below and match that bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. But back to work. Now that we have a handful of ways to initiate conversations at work and networking events, let's dig into some ways to start conversations with your peers at school. Another form of work. In these examples for academic settings, we go back to the opener. Sorry to interrupt. Over the last few weeks, I've been asking everyone to meet their opinion regarding this one question. If you could only read one book for the rest of your life, what would it be? A very good question to ask while you're sitting in the library studying. Uh, what is one subject that schools are not teaching but should and why? No matter what you study, should public speaking be a mandatory class for all students? students. If you did not have to sleep, how would you spend that extra eight hours? Dude, this is just a good question to ask anybody anytime. I wish that we had a pill that replaced sleep. Sleeping takes so much time. Oh God, do I wish we could solve that problem. Or you could adapt some of the questions from the work section and use them in a school setting. For example, why was your best teacher the best? Doesn't work as well as why was your best boss the best? Or what type of courses do you feel best prepare people for the real world setting? Speaking of common interests, the question below works great as a fail safe when meeting new people at school. If you were not here studying, what would your normal Thursday evening look like? You could also use that for almost anything. If you're out and just talking to somebody at the bar. Hey, if you weren't here drinking, what would your normal Thursday look like? <laughs> 
which again, you can adopt for a networking event. If you were not here tonight, what would you normally be doing on a Wednesday night or in the, even in the office? If you did not have to work, how would you spend your day? And finally, a side part about introducing yourself. You may have noticed in the list of icebreakers and conversation leads above that I never lead off by introducing myself. And there is a good reason for this. Most people have a hard time remembering names and hearing it first thing without any context makes this even more difficult. So instead of leading with, hi, my name is Joe, I found much greater success ending the conversation by sharing my name and asking for theirs. Hey, I really enjoyed speaking with you. I only have one more question. My name is Joe. What's yours? That's a pretty cute way to end a conversation. It's so cute. By exchanging names at the end of the conversation, you raise the probability of both parties remembering them. Not only that, the conversation ender above is guaranteed to get a smile, while also opening the door for an easy transition to be made when asking for contact details if a connection is made. As an example, I really enjoyed speaking with you. I only have one more question. My name is Joe. What's yours? Huh. My name is Liam. Nice to meet you, Liam. I would love to continue having the kiss. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Liam. I would love to continue this conversation at a later date. Is it cool if I connect with you over LinkedIn? Yeah, man. Totally. What's your name on LinkedIn? As I've said many times, it's really helpful to have these sorts of things in your back pocket just in case to start conversations. Uh, when you go into a networking event feeling prepared, whether it's knowing people there, going with a friend, or just having things to talk about, uh, you'll feel more confident and thus come off more competent and just friendlier. Those have been some great conversation starters for professional settings. Tomorrow, we'll go over some conversation starters for social settings. I hope you learned something. In the meantime, if you read a cool article, you can send it over to hijoshow at gmail.com. But until tomorrow, read something good. This has been The Joe Show.